Gabriel Kraft or the old memoir part four. Once von Liss forced my cooperation, the first assignment for the Wahrheit was to decipher a document seized at the infamous Hotel Royal, Paris. Well, infamous to someone like me, who spent a career studying the group of the devil for want of a better term, the accountant. I dislike that word. Practitioners of what some condemn as witchcraft are usually ordinary folk. They just approach the divine in a different way than their neighbors at the cathedral. The society occult, on the other hand, has no such problem with the world. Their wealth and power protect them from your average pitchfork mob. As they sought to use dark magic as a means of extending their influence. I know it but the documents for pages from the society's favored tome of rituals. It was a so-called spell book compiled over centuries. Only the inner circle had ever seen it. But something terrible happened back in the Some crisis that compelled the society to take the book apart and hide the pages in sacred places around the world. Because I recognized the pages, I was rewarded with the task of tracking more down and reconstituting the book. Uh, as he offered to remind me, Von Liszt had my beloved Sasha under arrest. Succeeding in my task was my only chance to keep us both alive. Gabriel Kraft, audio memoir, part five. My servitude to the Wahrheit was almost over before it truly began. I was tasked with gathering the lost pages of the Tome of Rituals. But I had no idea where to start. All I had was a few pages already in Von Liszt's possession. Von had notes scribbled on the margin. And just as Von Liszt began threatening to execute my poor Sasha, I recognized that handwriting. One of the patrons of my university was an amateur demonologist. <laughs> the hobbies of the idle rich. Anyhow, he must have once possessed the pages to have jotted down those notes. Von Liszt had him arrested and tortured. He revealed he had been a member of the society, one entrusted with hiding tome pages. He listed others who also possessed a few. With enough pages, I deduced the locations of various artifacts listed within them. For a time, I was von Liszt's most valuable helper. He rewarded me with a letter from Sasha. Proof of life, he called it. I tried not to weep as I read it. Von Liszt hated that. But things turned for the worse when none of the artifacts seemed to have any power. I had made a devil's bargain to keep my beloved alive. But my luck was running out. Gabriel Croft to Special Forces. By now you know the dark ether entities dwelling within you have visited our world before. Those who could perceive them have mistaken them for ghosts, deities, even angels. My own description of them as demons owes more to my academic background than to any belief they are infernal in origin. But we all see the world through our own lens. One can hardly blame a Viking for seeing Nauticus as a frost giant, or the ancient Greeks for thinking Invicta was the war god Ares. My point is that our own biases color how we see them. You hear demon and you think evil. <laughs> the truth is much more nuanced. These are immortal beings from another universe as capable of benevolence as they are of doing harm. In short, they do not share our sense of right and wrong. So never forget, these are not demons in some biblical sense of the word. They are your partners. Their hatred of court effects assures that our goals are aligned. Craft here. I have been thinking about something that happened when the artifacts awakened. 
von List bonded with Cortifex. One of the first things he did was to gather all the pages from the Tome of Rituals that led us to the Scepter of Cortifex and locks them away in his office. I stayed out of his way. Frankly, I was terrified. The man was already dangerous. But now, there was a light in those pale blue eyes that... Well, you get the idea. But in hiding the origins of the scepter, Von List raised some troubling questions. Was there some vulnerability mentioned in those pages? Some threat to his plans? <laughs> I was not on the expedition that recovered the scepter. All I know is it was found in Egypt's eastern desert, far from the great cities of antiquity. I heard there was a temple to Osiris there, long forgotten and not mentioned in ancient records. I suspect those pages may provide a breakthrough for our little resistance movement. There must be some reason Von List hid them. Just something to keep in mind as we search for a way to stop the Varheit before the worst can come to pass. Craft, entry number six. I had found Von List the artifacts in the Tome of Rituals. They proved as useless as the rest of the relics the Varheit plundered. He looked at me with more disgust than usual, losing faith in me. The moment I was no longer useful would be the end of me and my Sasha. So we were never officially married and we kept our union from prying eyes. Sasha was my spouse. I could not give up until we were reunited. But the search for a mystical Wunderwaffe to save the Reich was based on the delusions of a Nazi death cult. I was beginning to despair. And then the incident at Project End Station punched a hole into the dark ether, awakening the artifacts in the blink of an eye. My fear I was not producing results became abject terror that I had handed Wolfram von List the ultimate weapon. This is Graf. I want to talk about dark ether rules. Those little symbols you see all around you. I first saw them on loose pages from the Tome of Rituals that I tracked down for the Varheit. Then we found them inscribed at all the sites where we found the dark ether artifacts. I could see they fit no known human alphabet, but some of my colleagues attributed them to the ancient Aryans. Their reasons were obvious. Von List answers to Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler, whose belief in German superiority is the core of the Nazis' poisonous ideology. Himmler wanted De Wahrheit to find evidence the Aryan race invented the hallmarks of civilization, including written language. But kissing Himmler's backside would not change the facts. These rules were not Aryan. They were, however, used in mystical rites as far back as Egypt's fourth dynasty, as recently as the 1920s. Belakar has since explained to me that they are the basis for dark ether rune magic. She is endeavoring to teach me their use, but I fear I have been a poor pupil. Some runes are associated with specific demons, like Cortifex or Saraxis, Others? Well, I suppose that remains to be seen. Oberführer von List, to all the Wahrheit personnel operating in Merville, France, in Paris, and in the swamp known to locals as Chino Numa. First, your service is exemplary. The dimensional weak spot at the windmill site is already receiving vital support from the Dark Ether. The archaeological dig at Shinonuma 
is yielding important insights about the entities aiding the enemy. And preparations atop the Hotel Royale will ensure that all of Paris will soon experience a very different sort of nightlife. Be advised that another area of operations is underway. You may hear radio traffic from our unit in the eastern desert of Egypt. Theirs is a mission vital to protecting our most valuable ally, Herr Cortifex. Requests from this task force get top priority. So far, Kraft's little band of guerrillas have not targeted that operation. And I intend to keep it at bay. Continue with your duties, my loyal soldiers. Soon the whole world will be at our feet. This is Oberfuhrer Wolfram von List. To all troops of Kampfgruppe die Wahrheit, you have my congratulations and sincere appreciation for what you have accomplished so far in Stalingrad. Exhumation of corpses continues on schedule. Our undead army will soon rise in earnest. On that glorious day, our march across Europe begins. We are transforming the site of our greatest military humiliation into the source of our ultimate victory. For the Third Reich, Stalingrad was not das Ende, not the end. It is the Anfang, the beginning. From here, our army der Toten will awaken. Marching from mass grave to mass grave, increasing their ranks. Fatherlands born and dead will once again fight for our shared destiny. And if you see old friends and comrades among them, remember, they will not be the men they once were. But their service continues. Their previous sacrifice no longer in vain. Just salute them and get out of their way. Our fallen will combine with their own to drive all our enemies into the sea. I worry those worms are polluting our world. Did you succeed? This is Oberfuhrer Wolfram von List, calling from Divarite Mobile Headquarters, supporting Army Group North. Transcribe and forward the following to the office of Heinrich Himmler. Berlin, Mein Reichsfuhrer. We have experienced a rather dramatic development here in Leningrad. I will go into detail when we next meet. In brief, some artifacts we collected have yielded rather tangible results. I have experienced them personally. Suffice to say, I am a changed man. I must now take immediate action on behalf of the Reich. Advise we are deploying immediately to Stalingrad. I would wait for permission. The situation is precarious, and there is not a moment to lose. You know my devotion to the Reich is complete and unshakable. I do not take this action lightly, but I am now in possession of a military asset so radical in nature, it will turn the tide of the entire war. Again, details to come when the time is right. Until then, keep faith in me. Tell the Fuhrer this is no cause for alarm. Rather for celebration, the Third Reich shall endure. Cortex, do you know why I chose Stalingrad as the epicenter of my operations? I mean, beyond all the corpses, the mass graves. Do you know why this choice is personal for me? We share much now, Wolfram, but I cannot read your thoughts, nor can I search your memories. Nor would I allow you to. This arrangement of ours is intimate enough as it is. Agreed. But as long as we serve each other's purposes, you may as well tell me what happened here. What happened here is the German 6th Army took the city and was then surrounded and trapped for five months. And you were part of this 6th Army? No. I 
led an SS rescue mission here. The Honor we cannot afford to lose those men. The death toll was already horrific by the time we arrived. I spent the rest of that brutal winter adding to the Russian casualties. We tried to resupply our men. We tried to break the siege. All in vain. At the end, General Paulus surrendered. Most of his men were never seen again. I had witnessed a death blow against the Wehrmacht. I could see the war was lost. But then I made my way back to headquarters. No one wanted to hear my report or face the awful truth. So, this place, it scarred you. And victory here will make you whole. Nine Cortifex. Such scars do not fade. If I have learned anything, it is that war changes everything. Not my face, not my face. There is no going back, but I will still savor my ultimate revenge. Where are you headed? Tell me, Cortifex. What do you remember of the men and women who used to summon you to the Hotel Royale? Is that how they put it? They summoned me? Such gall. Members of the society are called for the wealthiest, most powerful people in Europe. Puppet masters of the Western world. They also dabbled in dark magic. Their seances and rituals at the Hotel Royale were the stuff of legend. They were children playing with fire. And if I answered their call, it was only out of boredom. After all, I was trapped in my scepter. If some red blood fool contacted me with their crystal ball, at least it gave me a glimpse of how far humans had come. And for all the progress they thought they made, for all their riches and influence, the society occult were tampering with forces beyond their understanding. The one thing that impressed me was their spellbook, the Tome of Rituals, dark ether rune magic written by humans, but they could not have written it without help. True. Over the centuries, they summoned others of your kind, and one of them, most likely Belekar, gave those children all the matches they needed to burn their world to cinders. That farm with the windmill, the one in Mervie, France, doesn't look very important, does it, Cortifex? To me, Wolfram, nothing about your world looks particularly important. Earth is just a stepping stone to my eventual triumph back in the dark ether. I help you here, you help me get back. The rest is just details. Fair enough. But do you know what transpired near that windmill during our last global conflict? The Great War, we called it. The war to end all wars. Such optimism. Is there a point to this, Wolfram? Indeed there is. The First World War pitted outmoded tactics against unprecedented weaponry. In just one day at the farm, 10,000 men fell as they marched in ranks directly into a of fire. Ah, that explains it. So much blood spilled all at once. It left its mark on the veil that separates us from the dark ether. Precisely. The weak spot we are trying to exploit. And the dead who fell that day. All those thousands of corpses. <sighs> they are buried nearby. Oh, not 
not for long. I'd keep my mouth shut. I don't know how many of your centuries ago it happened, but I remember when we first became aware of your world. Before that, we thought the Dark Kingdom was most everywhere. Then one day, strange items began to appear in my realm. I speak of things like that pack a punch device and the box that spits out guns. They caused quite an uproar among my kind. How do they work? Where do they come from? And what kind of trouble could I stir up? I spent several of your lifetimes just catching glimpses through the dimensional veil. I watched you silly things just discover agriculture and start to trade rounds. So the best. The heart, not the head, so the mechanisms that landed in the dark ether must have come from your future. Don't ask me how. Oh, I was too busy playing with your ancestors to care. At first, I got them to see me in campfires, then in pools of water. Later, it was mirrors and then crystal balls. The more civilized you became, the more. Refined the lens through which we spoke. But there was no crossing over, no visiting in the flesh. So I looked for a way to deepen my contact. Kitsune. Do you know that word? I picked it up a few centuries back when I spent time in Japan. It means fox, but it also referred to a sort of trickster spirit. There was sent a bomb with Max This was called Kitsunetsuki. Such a lovely language. It meant the fox was within you, controlling you, affecting your mind. So guess what more than a few humans used to call me? Some even offer themselves for my kitsune tsuki. I salute the Japanese for their fearlessness, because that's what you have to be to bond with me. Fearless. Soldiers, servants, holy men, lords and ladies. I hooked up with anyone who was willing to take me for a ride. And what a time we had. The party lasted from the Heian period, well into the Edo period, but it all came to an unpleasant end when, well, <laughs> the less said about that, the better. Pick the fight with the wrong Kanaka Mauli. Saraxus likes to claim she discovered your world, but there were many of us who took an interest. She saw you merely as new toys. Court effects. I have never fully found it, but I assume he saw new lands to plunder. He ordered Nauticus to study you for conquest. Nauticus ordered me to learn your ways of war. And Belakar, curiosity is our lifeblood. We each had our favorite mortals to visit. For me, the Greeks. For Cortifex, the Egyptians. We were seen as patron spirits. Angels. Demons. Gods. Saraxus did have the idea to make artifacts that could bond us to mortals, but it took Belakar's cunning to actually make it work. Even then, we each had to craft our own. We tried to make them fit the cultures we wanted to visit. None of us got it quite right. I was probably closest with my sword, but swords, I understand. Court effects? Hm. Court effects just didn't care. Two pyramids and stick. How long did that take him? We cast our artifacts through the veil. Our friends picked them up. And suddenly we were truly with them. We 
Sien Toire, an architect, Freemason, he called himself. Quite clever for someone so short-lived. He was a senior member of the Society of Occult, a group in contact with my kind since your Middle Ages. They understood us well enough to write their own spellbook based on dark ether rune magic. You know it, as the Tome of Rituals. They always changed their meeting sites to maintain secrecy, until Lucien designed what would become their mystic fortress. He erected the Hotel Royal above the catacombs that run beneath Paris. Underground tunnels lined with bodies, laid out in a rune magic pattern to create a dimensional nexus. It is no mistake that Cordifex sealed off the hotel's rooftop to further Von List's plans. If we cannot stop his undead army from rising in earnest, the Hotel Royal will become a rallying point, a place of power to ensure our enemy prevails. Once known as the Conqueror, now forced to rub shoulders with a lonely grunt like me. In Victor, I have nothing against grunts. I was always well liked by my soldiers. <laughs> Hello, General. You most certainly were not. Yes, what you liked. Fair point. You, the light, the destroyer, always in the thick of the fight. Me, they followed by the thousands, yet fighting as one. Because with me in command, they knew they would win. The Norsemen over here sensed this about me. They looked up to me. Revered me, in fact. Father of the Frost Giants. That is what they called me. Mighty warriors, the Norse. You would have liked them. Perhaps. The way one is fond of a warhound. But yes, I have enjoyed the company of human soldiers in the past. Against Cortifex. But by 
By now, they are surely back to battling each other. This will not happen all at once, Destroyer. First, they must make contact. Then, we must help them fashion artifacts to bind them to this plane. Perhaps the Nether Wars rage once more in the Dark Aether. But the head of Cortifex is too great a prize to resist. Someone will answer my call. 